Setting expectations, the twabs keep on rolling. Changes to blue drops in the pipe. Our prayers are being answered. Power floors and raid launch date. Our prayers might be getting answered again. And to make it even better, gunsmith updates. Spend your gunsmith mats. I don't understand that last part. That doesn't make any sense to me. Chat, do not get our hopes up here, guys. Could be getting some of the changes that we've been looking for for a long time, AKA auto dismantle blues. They might be changing the power system to not be awful. I, I could rant about that for 30 minutes, but I'll save you guys the, uh, yeah. I want to hear the rant. What's wrong with the power system? Did I just turn this into a 30 minute YouTube video? This was shot in front of a live studio audience at twitch.tv slash sweatsicle. The, the current power progression system essentially, yeah, it stinks, it's smelly. It not only like takes away the whole like uh, you earned it feeling, but you can literally just skip over all of it if you really wanted to and play the lazy card. The biggest problem is there's no stepping stone system. The way that things worked and the way that people appreciated, I hate to be a Destiny 1 Andy and circle back seven years in time here, but the reason why people are so nostalgic about that leveling system is because, so D1 versus D2. You have a stepping stone system and then D2 is just kind of this para, para, parabolic arc. You start out with like your your base your base leveling here, right? The enemies sit on these floors, right? The enemy is gonna be slightly above you, so you're gonna be challenged. Your goal is to overcome to get to the next stair step up. You being under level, whether it's uh, in the story or uh, basically Destiny 1 boiled down to either like the story or the raids or like Iron Banner. TLDR, the raid enemies are level 27. The highest you could get to was level 26 unless you did the raid. Once you did the raid, you started earning pieces of gear that would make the raid easier the next time you did it. So essentially, once you learned to overcome one step, then you were on level, things became easier, and then you have to overcome the next step, which was hard mode raids. You were always under level for these hard mode raids because it was level 30, and you could not get to level 30 with, uh, without beating hard mode. So being pressured under light again makes you think critically about, okay, how do I overcome this next step? How do I not get my ass kicked how do I learn to synergize better with my team, get better gear, optimize my build better, optimize my loadout better to overcome the, the obstacles so that I can earn the top loot and not get my ass kicked next time. The point is, is the game needs ways to be constantly challenging players, whether you're new to the game or you're a returning player uh, playing the new content. Getting your feet wet in the end game it wasn't more gatekeepy in D1, but it required more effort. Like it, re it required you to get your ass kicked a little bit more before you were able to move on to the next step. D2 totally negates all of that because of the artifact. Let's just say the top of the end game curve is up here. You have a new player down here. The new player honestly doesn't have to do legitimately does not have to do any pinnacles whatsoever you could be what is what is max right now is it 1330 so the new player could get to 1320 and then you add the artifact on top of that you can go from the bottom to the top you literally just grab a grapple hook and you swing and grab onto the top and just pull yourself up there's literally no steps because the artifact requires no brain cells to level up you can just pick up bounties every day. There's no, there's nothing technically forcing you to be pressured in between here. When your limits are tested, it doesn't, this, this applies to anything that isn't video games, by the way. Anything that you care about and you grind and you get better at, when your limits are tested and you finally achieve your goal, it feels 10 times better to get your ass kicked and finally overcome it than it does to put in effort and just reach the end without any sort of journey along the way and that's what the game is about is it's is it's about those experiences of getting your ass kicked with your friends going to bed because you didn't finish the raid coming back the next day doing it better getting a little bit farther until you finally overcome it and then that loot that you got that that's the loot that is meaningful and you're gonna hold on to okay that is the this is coming from somebody who's played the game since the d1 beta that is the main difference between the leveling systems right now. We're not gonna even go into a whole nother topic of like what's considered end game content nowadays and what is actually pressuring players to become better at the game. Do you, do you guys get the point? Slight plug, we made Community Clan 5 if you guys wanna join. 
one through four are full now, and I want to see you guys in the Discord starting to play together, boys. Get some groups ready to uh, grind Witch Queen together. So I I think I actually might just not turn in these gunsmith mats, I'm going to be honest. I only have 30,000. What about these? What are they doing with these? Turn in your old materials, they said. Well, guess what? When Mercury comes back, when Mars comes back, guess who's got materials? This guy does, okay? You turn in your bounties as soon as you log in? Yeah, after you have the artifact. You want to wait till you get the artifact. Would you recommend popping the XP++ first? Pop the smaller ones first. Or actually, wait. It doesn't matter, theoretically. There is a theoretical way in which you could get a little bit more XP, but that would require you having to mathematically boil down which bounties to turn in. It's not worth it. Just literally just rip your bounties. It does, bro. It literally doesn't matter. You're gonna, if you're a hardcore player, you're gonna hit rank 100 within the first couple days anyways. If you really want to get technical about it, you get your first XP boost literally when you log on in your rank zero. You get the large XP boost if you have the pass. 10 XP away from level five to get this next one. It would be smarter for you to turn in a daily instead of a weekly because you'll hit the next XP threshold and you'll get more bonus XP on the weekly. But that's the only circumstance in which you would get more XP. Don't think that hard, man. If you're grinding that hard, you're overdoing it. You'd be literally, in the time that you spend mathematically planning out which bounties to turn in, you could just pick up new bounties and do them in the thrall way. In the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter. Don't overthink it. What matters is you saved XP if you rip all your bounties, if you saved 63 on each character between weeklies and dailies, what do you get? You get like around, is it 25? I can't remember. It's either like around here or around here. I can't remember. Gotta optimize. Yeah, you guys have fun optimizing your bounties. I'm gonna go optimize my god rolls with the new loot is what I'm gonna do. Because if you're getting ready for the raid and you don't hit rank 100 before the raid, I would be very surprised. So literally rip all your bounties, you'll get to like at least far onto the second page here. And then by that point, you'll be like halfway to getting whatever this exotic is that you'll already have anyways. So there's no reason to not like prep bounties and do that kind of stuff. We literally have nothing to do. We're waiting for the exorcism thing and possibly if there's a live event. Yeah, XP hoarding also gets you your artifact mods sooner so you can make builds faster. Is day one raiding a good or bad idea? Especially if you're not aiming for worlds first. I guarantee you, if you've never done a day one raid before and you're someone who enjoys the end game, that will be your favorite experience you've ever had in the game. Regardless of whether you're going for worlds first or not. You get some friends together and you get to figure out the raid for yourself without like looking at a video or a guide. Those are the memories you're gonna carry with you for years. Yeah, as long as you're not molding at your team for throwing. Spend how many of these can I hold? 30 plus? So I should literally just start stacking these then or what? They apparently give uh, gear that helps you hit soft cap. I don't, they actually they do give XP, don't they? Are you disappointed Microsoft don't own Destiny anymore? You do realize Microsoft never owned Destiny, right? Talk about Activision? Is that like a, is that supposed to be like an Activision joke? Because they got bought out today? That's gonna be interesting. I don't know, like, would Bungie, do you think, ever? They're pretty set on doing their own thing, but like, at the same time, I feel like if the deal is right, I don't, I don't think like them being owned by Microsoft again would be a bad thing, necessarily. As long as they give them the creative freedom to just keep creating their game and just give them more of a budget. Bungie needs another company to set them on the right path. As far as PvP goes, yeah. I would agree very heavily. Other than that, I feel like they're doing a good job. PvP is just kind of a show all around. The only thing that they've done significantly is they've balanced out weapon types a little bit better and the supers are finally in a good spot so there's not supers every four seconds. I want them to be the owners of the Destiny IP, but that doesn't mean they can't partner with Microsoft, you know? But then again, like if they're partnering or like buying them, that usually means that they don't really give them the creative freedom that they usually want. But then again, that doesn't mean it couldn't happen. And they finally split with Shadowkeep and they're like, oh, this is gonna be Destiny's best year yet. Like they were, they quite clearly were just blowing smoke up everybody's ass. Shadowkeep did not nearly live up to the hype that they, they made it sound like. That was very frustrating. It had some good spots to it and they've learned a lot. But another thing holding this game back is the fact that they're still developing from home and that makes development time like increase by a lot. So again, you're paying people for more hours over a longer period of time with less 
pro like less uh, produced content. At the end of the day, like we got to do whatever most safe for the workers, right? Because of COVID. But yeah, I don't know what a good happy medium there would be. Well, I, I remember a lot of them took their computers from the office the home. Gonna change the, the characters I remember that seeing that on Twitter and whatnot. Over. Like if you're if you're a studio that's already multi-billion dollar and like you've already had people working from home, that's cool. Yeah, but they literally always were in the office working together before COVID. Does working from home, you think, require more hours of dev build time there. than working in the Maybe studio together on a project like this? Because I think it does. Have. That's basically what it boils down to. That's Literally the big guys. difference. You save a ton of money with employees not being in office? Ow. You realize some people still have to work there, right? It's not like nobody's there. Electricity costs? Because they still have, bro, they have to keep the studio lit and stuff. I don't think they just shut down all the electrical stuff. I, I, I would love to know like who's currently working at the studio right now, like what positions are actually working in office. If there's nobody working at the studio, they, they pay for that studio to keep upkeep and keep running and have that office space. They're not just gonna leave it vacant. That's a huge waste of money. To fight our enemies with. Maybe it's time to fight fire with fire. Bro, do you see how bad that recoil is? Dude. Is, um... Bro! Oh my God. They put that in a, in a Vidoc. Oh no. At home setup, you got a laptop, you got an alternate monitor. This all really came back from the gameplay idea. Look how, did you see how delayed that was? Idea for Stasis all Bro. really came back. Dude, I couldn't imagine playtesting on input lag that bad. Inefficiencies of being able to properly playtest is going to make it so that the final product takes longer to produce. Wicked. No time to explain is coming back. Instead of just being the gun that refills your magazine when you land position hits, you, you can now sit 80 miles back in Crucible and, and two burst people. Out. For Beyond Light, we really wanted to create exotic armor pieces that formed a key part of your build around which all the other parts of your build could revolve. For example, the Titan gets the Icefall Mantle, which is a set of exotic Disabled? arms that looks like it is- Oh wait, is it re-enabled now? If you are facing a wave of thralls running at you, you can nail them- <laughs> Did you, do you hear the way you phrased that? Let me put on this exotic armor piece so I can fight these waves of thralls. Motherfucker, <laughs> throw a Wither Horde on the ground and call it a day, okay? Don't get me wrong, Necrotic Grips are dope but such a waste of an exotic we warned you it was going to be dangerous down here yes there's back we finally catch up to what we saw at the end of forsaken this cutscene was so pretty the slate's been wiped clean when he was resurrected as a guardian that's we not true he's, he's learning what he did what he, could be he remembers we got lied to in season of the hunt when we got lied to in the beyond the light vidoc dude and to find out more about her relationship with Sabathun and what that means for your Yeah, me too. Destiny. A month away. And at the end of year four, she's Dominoes. Gonna down the dominoes. We're going to see what she's doing really up to. And so this year, she's putting the last pieces in place. Do we know what they're covering here? Do we know what this is now? What is this? Is it like an emblem? I feel like it's like an emblem or something. It's metrics of some kind. Why would they cover this? Is this their Eververse earnings report? And now if we look very closely, you can see that their Eververse earnings report is... Does that look about right? Because that's what I see right here. Yeah, that's probably just the Anarchy ornament sales. Let's be honest. When did this come out? October 27th and the Vidoc... This was like two weeks before Beyond Light. So I wonder if they'll do another one two weeks before. Oh,